the plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? All right now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. What up and welcome back. It's your girl, Jane, the plainest Jane. And we got some syrup to get into. Come on in here. Look, Ray Charles could see this coming. We just didn't know it was going to happen before Christmas. What's going on with the flashy pasta, y'all? What's, what, 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 what's going on? Not an incarcerated man of God. I mean, not, not one as bold, okay? And egotistical as Bishop. Bishop Lamar Miller Whitehead. Yes, indeed. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. And look, today, Bishop Lamar Whitehead, Bishop Lamar Whitehead was picked up by the FBI. I mean, everybody was wondering how he was making money anyway. I mean, like, how do you have all of, you know, you got Rolls Royce with the drop top a prayer closet with name brand this and name brand that in the congregation of about a dozen people. Where's your money coming from, brother, baby? We knew it was going to happen, but it happened a lot sooner than expected. We have a lot to get into. Come on in here, hit thumbs up on the video if you haven't already. Drop some pancakes down below in the chat. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm a little sick. And I pushed myself to do this because I was I was supposed to bring up the church bus for y'all yesterday. Y'all know on Sundays I started this new series where I pick y'all up from church and we just kind of talk about what's like what's what's really going on out here. And I couldn't pick y'all up from church yesterday because I was so I was just so sick and sluggish. But you know, it was it was something in my bones. It was something in my intuition that told me. Something is not going right. Let me fix my collar, okay? Something told me that something was a, a ride at the church and that I should stay away because they might come in there guns blazing trying to catch somebody. So I'm so sorry I left y'all on the bus stop. Um, but now the church is safe. Not that nobody was at his little lousy church with only seven congregants left anyway. But look, we really need to talk about this I was covering this flashy pastor for um, for a while. You know, he went viral a while ago, and it kind of just died off. He got more more pushback, more more flack than anything. Because I think anybody with two sets of eyes and a decent sense of discernment could understand that he is beyond a false prophet. It's one thing to try to do the right thing in the name of Jesus and not have everything right and to be imperfect because we all imperfect, right? But it's another thing to be a whole scammer and to be using Jesus's name. Do it. It's a whole nother thing. So I'm going to make it through this. I do have the sniffles. I got my tissues right here and I'm going to try my best if I have to sneeze because I've been sneezing all day to hit the mute button because it is pretty loud when I sneeze. But come on in. After a hard day of work today, it is Monday. And we're going to go through a list of things. I'm about to tell you what we're going to be talking about. We're definitely going to go through the entire indictment directly from the FBI's website, right? Directly from the FBI's website. We're going to go through that. After a hard day of work and preaching to the last seven congregants left of his failing shoebox of a church, Bishop Lamar Whitehead, a.k.a. the flashy pastor, a.k.a. Reverend Revenue, a.k.a. false prophet and scamming saint was picked up by the FBI. Not the regular folks, people. The F, the B, and the I. <laughs> Them the people you really don't want to play with. When it's federal, you know it's real. We're going to get into this. We're going to go over some of what he was known for, some of his more infamous, 
moments, the name he made for himself outside of the name of God. We're going to read through the entire, um, we're going to read through the entire indictment together. And I do want to touch on um, Dr. Larry Reed's thoughts on this. I have some thoughts about his thoughts and how he got picked up by the FBI on his day off. Brother, it's not even Sunday. You're not even working at the church. How you get fired or picked up by the FBI on your day off? You know, social media is such a drug, isn't it? Because for you to be scamming and to be stealing all this money from the government, the people of your congregation, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and for you to just be so um, such an attention whore, such a clout chaser, and for you to use social media as your megaphone to make you, you can't even lay low while scamming. What type of scammer you know? Not to mention, he's already been convicted for shit like this before. So, I mean, and you thought you was going to get away with it again by being hot. The FBI let you hang yourself so bad. And all it took was social media because he loved the attention. We don't get into it, goddammit. It's 248 of us in here right now. We got 97 thumbs up. Do me a favor. It's free to hit thumbs up, okay, on the video Come on in, hit thumbs up. Let's get into it. Make sure your mental health is okay. Although I do plan to sit here and laugh and joke a little bit while we get through the nitty gritty in the details. Let's get ready for takeoff on this church bus now that the coast is clear. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? So we did make it to, what are we at? 26. I try not to keep count. Okay. So we're at 26,000 subscribers and I do want to say thank you. Sometimes I don't really like to look at the sub count because it's not really about that. I try to focus on the quality of my content, but I did see that we hit uh, 26,000 today. So thank you so much to all the new subscribers, the day one subscribers. And thank you so much, especially to my channel members and my moderators. Okay. Of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down, honestly, either way, I do appreciate it. But regardless of what you click on this video, make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else, okay? Now, let's get started. I wanna get into reading this indictment, but I just wanna remind you really quickly, and it's not even gonna take us three minutes to get, to get here and to get through this. I wanna remind you of an excuse because I do have a cough drop in my mouth, so you might hear a little bit of a, might sound like a speech impediment or something, but I need this cough drop because my throat is just scratchy. Um, I want to remind you, and it's not going to take long, just a couple of short clips that I still had in my Rolodex, baby, um, of, the, of the type of person that this guy is portraying himself as a man of God. I really need you all to understand this. Let's get into this first one. This first one, a lot of us know that he had this big beef, this big issue with Larry Reed Live. Um, he decided that he wanted to go all around the internet on more than one occasion and call Larry Reed Live a homophobic slur, right? A maggot with an F, if you will. Let's take a listen. Roll us on your wrist of plain giant. I heard you just explain they put a gun to your baby's head. That's off limits, right? Every day. But I seen you in interviews after. And I'm thinking church. I'm thinking God. And so I get I see you get into it with a guy and a girl. And you now call I call, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Joe. I didn't call him homosexual, Joe. I call him, I called him a faggot. That's what I called him. All right, Joe. But let me let, let me let me let me let me touch on this real quick, Joe. Right? Because um, I want yeah, I never to be loud and proud with it. Right? Okay. I want to say this. Right? The reason why. Do you not? And I'm not trying to go there, but do you think gay people are no, not but, but, people but, of God? No, but faggot doesn't God mean gay people. It means a bag of sticks. That's what that really means, right? If if you if you want to get technical, no, I'm, I'm talking about Joe. Wanna... He playing semantics. He know he wasn't calling that man a bag of sticks. It's like if you were talking to a three year old, maybe even a four year old, you might be able to get away with that. Shit. Stop playing. 
Stop playing. Get technical, man. If you really want to get technical, really want right? to get technical. bag of sticks. You know what I'm saying? He's soft, right? I, I, I don't have nothing. A bag of sticks isn't soft, but you called him soft because again, that's another slur to what you're you're implying about your, you know, presumed what, what you're assuming about his sexuality, right? Get out of here. Nothing against the uh the LGBTQ community at all. When I was running for bold president, they were supporting me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have nothing against them. I have I have people in my church that was um was once that and now have changed. So like oh, so you got people in your church who were delivered. You said <sighs> okay, let's just let it play because it speaks for itself. I don't have nothing to get. It's their civil right to be who they want to be. I don't go. I don't. Let me tell you something. If I preach it, <sighs> right. Let's Question, so you believe that if a person, so you don't believe a person is born gay, you believe a person can change? Like, because I see these things all the time that the church think if you're gay, they could change you back to listen, not being gay. And listen, stuff. Joe, Do Joe you believe anybody that? can change. And let me say this, my belief and what anybody can change, but you know who can't change? You, because you a tiger that got out of doing some stuff like what you did. And you got out of there and you were doing the same thing again. And then you were on a bullhorn and the FBI was watching you the whole time. But go ahead, brother. What the scripture teaches me is that you're not born with sin. There's no way you can be born with sin. And if the Bible says that, and I'm talking about the Bible, when my church asked me to teach about how, uh, what does God say about homosexuality, I got to teach. So that's that. I had done a, did a short video on that. Um, a short video on that a while ago. Okay. So I just want to shout out to young smooth boy. Thank you so much. It says you're killing these YouTube streets. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much to the fame car network for the $10 super chat. He thought the regular police was going to investigate that stage robbery. Thank you for saying that. Cause we're going to get into that. And his eBay Gucci was a red flag, right? He mixed in. He had some fake designer with some real designer, but nonetheless, that lavish lifestyle he lived, with no legitimate income, not to mention the $90,000 that he jipped that old lady who was a part of his congregation out of. $90,000, which was her entire life savings. And guess how much he's, he he told that lady he was going to help her buy a home. He's, he's the ultimate scammer. He told that lady, hey, give me your $90,000 life savings. I'm going to help get your credit right and help to get you a home, right? And I'm going to give you $100 a month allowance when you give me the $90,000. First of all, baby, I can't even buy Lunchables for a month. I can't even buy school lunches for a month with $100. I can't even, I, I can't even, school lunches for one month cost more than $100. And then not to mention that $100 he offered that old lady in exchange for her life savings. He ain't even give her that. Not that the $100 would have done anything for her, but he ain't even give her that. This is a different type of P.O.S. Do you hear what I'm saying? Make sure y'all hit thumbs up and share this video. This is completely out of control. Thank you, young smooth boy, for becoming a member. I really do appreciate that. Oh, he's a different type of clout chaser. Now, let's go on to the next part before we get into the federal indictment. Now, I want to show you some video footage of him attacking and manhandling this woman in his church. That's what we're going to get into next. And this is a very short clip. It's not that long. Take the pictures. Take the pictures. Ooh, let's take a look again. Now, the reason why he grabbed her up like that is because she called him a false prophet. He be in there fake speaking in tongues and all this other stuff. It's given a different type of brand of Andrew Caldwell, but more bold and physical because Andrew can't fight. Um, so let's pictures. take the pictures. Take the pictures. Go over here. Go over here. Grab her. Grab her out. Grab her out. Now you can grab grab her out. 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 Baby, let me tell you. So I also reported on that as well. So I had to come give y'all the update. Right, because I've been reporting on this for a while. Here are one of the injuries that the lady sustained from that, and the fact that th that that hurt his feelings so bad, being called a false prophet in his church after the staged robbery, 
after he steals $90,000 from an old lady and doesn't even give her the $100 a month that he promised, which is nothing but chump change. And he couldn't handle the truth face to face. So he decides to assault this woman. She didn't touch. She didn't touch him. Right. That's to his character. Now, later on in the video, we're going to get into his explanation. He explains it for eight minutes long. Right. But I don't want to spend eight minutes before we get to the indictment. So we're going to get to his explanation after we read through the indictment. The last thing I want to show you is a very short clip before we get to the indictment. It is of how much this man he he he's desperately posing with celebrities from um, Floyd Mayweather and Ja Rule and you name it. He's trying to pose with him, right? Here's just one of many examples that I captured. I'm with my brother Ja, y'all. We out in the golf course, y'all. No doubt. So, I'm having a little burger, you know. Yeah, tell me, leave me alone, man. Leave my brother alone, man. Yeah, I just <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Look at that missing side tooth. Now, you know what I'm saying? Your teeth are your teeth. But if you scamming hundreds of thousands of dollars, nigga, get your teeth fixed. You focused on designer, right? Instead of getting you a basic side tooth implant, looking like a donkey out this mug. <clears throat> then you telling Ja Rule to tell people to leave you, a, leave you alone based off of the scrutiny and the criticism, the well-deserved scrutiny and criticism and dragging that you're getting online. Guess what? You can tell Ja Rule to leave to get people to leave you alone. Guess what? Ja Rule, the crowd don't even make noise when he go out no more. All right, that's one thing. Ja Rule can't get the feds to leave you alone, baby. Is Ja Rule up at the jail helping the feds to leave you alone? How about is your bestie, the mayor of New York City, is he up there telling the feds to leave you alone? See, because we saw you and we knew who you were, but the feds was already on you, but... but Okay, let's take a look at you at the golf course with Ja Rule, harassing celebrities to get him to say something to you. Breath look like it's hot. I'm with my brother Ja, y'all. We out in the golf course, y'all. No doubt. So, I'm having a little burger, you know. Yeah, tell me leave me alone, man. Leave my brother alone, man. He ain't <laughs> just trying to do his job, man. You know what I mean? Keep the people honest, man. That's man, it, man. Tell me leave me alone, man. man. Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain giant. You know, <laughs> tell me, leave me alone. Look what this person commented. I don't trust no pastor in all Gucci with a missing tooth playing golf with Ja Rule. <laughs> Hella red flags. Exactly. It's like, if you got to go get Ja Rule to tell people to leave you alone, just stop. You, like, you don't got no other conversations you can have with that man outside of they mess with me online, man. You a celebrity. Let's move on. Young Smooth Boy, thank you so much for the five dollar super chat. This is the pot calling the kettle black. He's a little too flashy. That's why he got the name Flashy Pastor, a.k.a. Reverend Revenue. Okay? Now, with all that being said, let's get back into, let's get into the indictment. This is what we're really here for. They say scammers don't change. I don't really think so either. I don't think scammers ever stop scamming. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Put a one in the comments if you think, Scammers stop scamming. Put a two in the comments if you think that scammers don't ever stop scamming. Any and all thoughts, let me know what you think down below in the comments. What we're going to do now is we're going to get up onto the FBI's website <laughs> and see what they got to say about this man. Not about Bishop. Not about the Bishop. Oh, I don't see any ones. Oh, scammers can't be rehabilitated according to the chat. Well, the votes are in. <laughs> <laughs> the votes are in, okay? Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into what the website is saying about old boy, okay? What are they talking about? What are they talking about? What are they talking about right here on this website, right? So what they're saying is this says the United States attorney announces the arrest of Lamar Whitehead for fraud, extortion, and false statements. Damian Williams, the United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, and Michael D., assistant director in charge of the New York field office of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, announced today the unsealing of an indictment charging Lamar Whitehead with defrauding one of his parishioners. 
out of part of her retirement savings. Remember that 90000 I was talking about? That's her. Attempting to extort and defraud a businessman and lying to the FBI. Whitehead was arrested this morning and will be presented in federal court today before United States Magistrate Judge Gabriel G. The case is assigned to the U.S. District Judge Lorna G. S. Now, the U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said, as we allege today, Lamar Whitehead abused the trust placed in him by a parishioner, bullied a businessman for $5,000, then tried to defraud him of more than that and lied to federal agents. His campaign of fraud and deceit stops now. Oh, oh, it stops now. They're using that strong language, okay? FBI Assistant Director Michael D. said, as we allege today, Whitehead carried out several, several duplicious schemes in order to receive funds from his victims. Additionally, when speaking with authorities, Lamar Whitehead consciously chose to mislead and lie to them. If you're willing to attempt to obtain funds through false promises or threats, the FBI will ensure that you are made to face the consequences of your actions in our criminal justice system. According to the indictment unsealed today in Manhattan Federal Court and publicly available information, Lamar Whitehead, who leads a church in Brooklyn, New York, has engaged in a course of conduct in which he sought money and other things of value from victims on the basis of either threats or false promises that the victim's investments would benefit excuse me, that the victim's investments would benefit the victims financially. Now, first, Lamar Whitehead introduced one of his parishioners to invest approximately $90,000 of her retirement savings with him, but instead spent the investment on, ooh, let's log in, spent the investment on luxury goods and other personal purposes. Mm. Second, Lamar Whitehead extorted a businessman for $5,000, then attempted to convince the same businessman to lend him $500,000. Oh, baby, come on now. And give him a stake in a certain real estate transactions in return for favorable actions from the New York City government, which... Lamar Whitehead knew he could not obtain. In addition, when speaking with FBI agents who were executing a search warrant, Bishop Lamar Whitehead falsely claimed that he had no cell phones other than the phone he was carrying when in fact, the flashy pastor owned a second phone which he regularly used to communicate, including to send a text message describing it as my other phone. Shortly after telling agents he had no other phones. Oh, oh, oh no, baby. Not Mr. I got two phones. But when the FBI get here, I'm going to say it's just one. Ha! <laughs> Boy, we knew your day would come. Every dog has its day. And one thing about them tables, they always turn. Mm, 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 mm. Flashy Pastor, a.k.a. Reverend Revenue, is 45 years old of New York. I'm sorry, of New Jersey. He's charged with two counts of wire fraud, each of which carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. One count of extortion, which carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison and one count of making material false statements, which carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. The maximum potential sentences as prescribed by Congress and are provided here for informational purposes only as any sentencing of the defendant will be determined by the judge. Mr. Williams praised the outstanding work of the FBI. The prosecution of this case is being handled by the Office of Public Corruption Unit. 
U.S. Assistant U.S. Attorneys Hagen Scotton, Celia C., and Andrew R. are in charge of the prosecution. The charges contained in the indictment are merely accusations and the defendant is presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. As the introductory phase signif signifies, the entirety of the indictment and the descriptions of the indictment set forth here in constitute only allegations and every fact described should be treated as an allegation. But one thing we can say here, despite the FBI covering their ass with all oh, this is just alleged, she's innocent until proven guilty. The feds don't pick you up for no reason. They've been monitoring him for quite some time. They've been monitoring him for a while. So when the FBI actually pull up and, and, and put the clank clank on you, they don't pick you up for no reason. See, see, the police will pull up and they'll detain you being all quick without necessarily having all their facts in play. But baby, not the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It seems like he fucked over too many people and too many people decided to call the police and he didn't think that anything was ever going to happen. And, 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 and people reached out and they said, police, can you help? Police, I need you to help me. He's scamming me out of my money. They said, police, help, police. So I wonder, because you see these glasses he always got on, these, these Paw Patrol glasses that he's, he, he even clearly stole from his three-year-old daughter. I wonder if they arrested him and them. I'm getting so sick of seeing these pink glasses on this fraudulent man. Let me tell you another thing that he was always doing. He was, and I have several of his Bible studies from six o'clock in the morning that I recorded on my cell phone because I found it funny. He'd be quoting wrong scriptures. Um, I, I, I mean, I, he, can't, he can barely read. He can barely read read okay he's quoting scriptures that don't even exist chapters and verses and so you know it's time that i bust those out not tonight right but look he's known for many things he's known for many things if you don't recall again being robbed for one million dollars we all felt like it was fraudulent some of them people didn't even flinch uh, uh, among the dozen of people who was sitting there one million dollars worth of jewelry it was an insurance scheme a scam his expensive clothes, although some real, although some fake, with a church of only 12 congregants. He began arguing and dragging anybody with a difference of opinion or who were critical amongst his very obvious fraudulent actions and dragging and exposing as if he was a blogger and then threatening to sue bloggers who were critical of him. Larry Reed being one of them, King Jobs being another. The list goes on and on, right? Pulling up people's mugshots and past records as if he doesn't have one. Do you see this mugshot here on the screen? It's a former mugshot. It's not his current mugshot, but I had pulled it a while ago, right? I mean, again, exposing content creators, at this point, I felt like he wanted to be a blogger, just like Boosie, right? Frequently misquoting the Bible. You know, the list goes on and on. I'm not sure if any of you remember, but he also, because D.O. Hughley was, was kind of critical of him, he offered to, um, he wanted to... Um, fight D.O. Hughley in a boxing match. He said, you think I'm a punk in the pulpit? No, he was holding you accountable. And accountability isn't an attack. But it's very clear that people like Flashy Pastor, Bishop Lamar Whitehead, they take accountability as an attack. You know how I know? Because he physically attacked a woman who held him accountable by realistically calling him a false prophet and a fraud, which he is. And he took that as some sort of attack when it was the truth. And he attacked her. He's like, oh, you attacking me. I'm going to attack you back. And it wasn't an attack. It was the truth. So he's out here offering D.L. Hughley, I, I want to offer you to a boxing match. You think I'm a punk in a pulpit? I mean, let's see what the guys think when you're sitting in the pen again. I mean, a punk? I mean, I don't know. You stole your daughter's glasses and you won't give them back. For God's sakes, what type of punk steals their child's glasses and wears their pole patrol? I mean, like, make it make sense. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm tired. What do y'all think? Not to mention, not to mention, okay? 
we we gonna get into some more stuff. I'm about to get into this eight minute clip of him explaining away, explaining away the manhandling of that woman as if it was right, as if it was okay, and it wasn't. But first, I want to touch on this point because it doesn't take long to touch on. A lot of us remember he was at it like neck and neck with Larry Reed. Larry Reed is is heavily rooted in his his foundation of being a church guy. Although he is a church guy, he's in the ministry, but he's also a blogger. His, his, his foundation is solidified. A lot of people can't pull that off. And if some people want to discount or discredit Larry Reed, it is what it is, but not as many discount Larry Reed as they discount, uh, discount uh, Lamar Whitehead, right? And so he decided to make assumptions about Larry Reed. He called Larry Reed again. I played the clip earlier. No need to play it again because it's nasty language. Calling somebody a maggot with an F and you're supposed to be a man of the pulpit, a man of the cloth, a man of God, inappropriate. Like you, there's no way you can be preaching to your congregation to turn the other cheek because you don't. You don't. Right. Like that's just foul to say. There's so many other things he could have talked about in regards to Larry Reed without hurling that type of slur at him. Right. But not to mention that he was being fat phobic to this woman right here. And they weren't even disrespecting him. They both have a religious background, an extensive religious background, and they were holding him accountable. And he didn't like it. And he started verbally attacking them, calling Larry Reed the F slur, calling this woman fat and all these other disgusting things. And this is not. And there was no there was no need for that, right? He could have attacked the argument and not the person. But it's clear he's not capable of that because he's not godlike. He's not godlike. Okay. So uh the other thing that we need to get into is the eight-minute response of him explaining why he's sitting at his his Rolls Royce. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears> hmm. <throat> scratchy throat let me pull up this clip so i can cough mm -mm -mm. and i got the video y'all i got the video that y'all don't see um i am a gentleman i am pro woman i don't i don't i'm not an abusive man never been never will um you know people that know me my father died when i was sick got killed when i am um um pro woman and um but these people were sent into my church to disrupt my church and this lady went towards my wife to attack her and my daughter and that's when i grabbed her okay and did what i had to do he lying so bad that lady did not go towards his wife or his child and you can tell he's making it up as he go you know when somebody knows they in the wrong and they talking to themselves and or a friend trying to get their little lie trying to get their story straight and trying to tweak it a little bit that's exactly what he's sitting here doing that's why he's um um mm -mm. what any man and any pastor would do okay uh we're just we're just off of the experience of three men coming into my church robbing us and putting a gun in my wife's face and in my eight-month-old daughter face she was eight months at the time um and and the way he kept bringing his daughter into into every situation he kept bringing his daughter into it his father into it you know to get sympathy points it was it was disgusting leave your child out of it because your daughter literally has nothing to do with all of the disgusting stuff that you get caught up in Eminem, thank you for being a channel member, number one, but thank you for the $100 super chat. I really appreciate that. It says, happy, merry holidays. I appreciate your content. Keep up the great work and get Leo both the gold, <laughs> the gold and silver collar. Thank you so much. And you know what? I will. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's not going to happen again. So for everybody that, um, that feels whatever they want to feel, y'all can feel whatever y'all want to feel. Um, and, um, no, I didn't choke her. <laughs> no, it was nothing like that. I grabbed her and escorted her out the way she needed to be escorted out. And I asked her, I said, you're going to be removed. You got to you gotta leave. And she walked back. This is something y'all can't see, but we have video in the church. We have video in the church. Okay, we have video in the church. And we also um, know who was behind it. You know, and they want me to say their name because all they want is um, followers and the young ladies were downstairs. Oh, Lord. 
online, but <clears throat> that live should have cut off. That was God telling him to shut up. Again. I am not a tent, y'all. That's all it is. It's an attack on who I am, um, and that's just what it is. But I am not a. Hold on a second. I am not a um, a person that will try to harm or hurt anyone. Um, but if if my safety is um, in jeopardy or my family's safety is in jeopardy, I'm going to do what I got to do. And that's just what it is. And you guys, you know, they're not doing this in the masjids and they're not doing this in the Jewish synagogues. But yet, you know, um, in the black church, right? I don't want to hear about no white man. I don't want to hear about no other. We don't want to hear about it either. So why are you talking about it? This ain't got nothing to do with the synagogues and other religions. This has everything to do with you being a lie and a cheat. And we don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. You cheating your own congregation out of their money and use a lie. Use a lie. In my best Tina Turner voice, okay? In my best Angela Bassett voice, <clears throat> right? Use a lie and use a cheat. Stop it. This has nothing to do with the other churches, the other religions, the other colors. Stop that shit race it's us it's us the people that are my color are doing this right and at the end of the day i keep telling you i'm not no punk if it was a man that came up it would have been a little different trust and believe it would have been a little different all right it would have been a whole lot different so if you think that y'all gonna come and walk in my church and act crazy all right all right you're gonna get escorted out whether if you get dragged out uh, you're going to walk out, but you're going to get out, period, point blank. You're not going to sit here and threaten nor jeopardize any of my members. And it shouldn't be like that. However you feel, you can have your feelings. Just please leave us alone. So um, that's just what it is, y'all. That's what it is. I'm okay. Um, I'm okay. And, um, you know, it was a woman. So my security team, you know, like I said, I got the video, y'all. She was walking off once I told her that she has to go. And she walked off and then she doubled back really fast and started to go at my wife and my daughter. And that's when I intervened. And that's when I did what I had to do as not only a pastor, but a husband and a father. There's nobody going to put their hands on my family. And that's just what it is. That's it. So when you beeline to my family, that's it. You're not going to. You That's it. So all bets is off and all gloves is off. And that's it. And you're going to. What was I typing? What? <laughs> get uh, grabbed up and you're going to get escort, escorted. So that's what it is, y'all. So I just wanted to tap. tap. What I say? I say use a damn lie. I've seen it on two different angles, boy. <laughs> I'm so out of line, but I was so in line, too. Happen and let y'all know that um, I'm okay. All the members are okay. <laughs> Not me type of <laughs> When I say you need Jesus and accountability, Lord. Family's okay, and I'll get a little deeper into this on probably tomorrow. Uh, I'm going on with my day. I'm going on with my day. But um, you know, if y'all own opinion, at the end of the day, I'm going to protect my family. That's it. I'm going to protect my family. And if you're going to sit here and, and say that you're not going, you wouldn't protect your family, you're a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> we ain't come to see if you was okay. We came to hear these fresh lies. <laughs> you're a liar, okay? If somebody said goons are coming next Sunday. All right, I got something for the goons, all right? <laughs> not me heckling this man. <laughs> I got something from y'all. Y'all, right, let me get off this. Let me get off this. Let me get off this live, y'all, because I'm not going to let nobody take me out of my character, all right? And like I said, everybody that feels some type of way, it's cool, all right? This message is not for you, you know what I mean? Back in the day, I would say your mother, oh, so that's just okay. what it is. Because you childish, and how old are you? <laughs> that's that baby boomer talking. I'm not saying, like, you in the church, back in the day, I would say your mother, ooh, ow, that hurt. Oh, you said my mother. Ooh, that, that, like that insult don't even sting the way it did back when our parents was growing up. Cut the shit. 
He really thought he said something. <laughs> Period point blank, but you know I'm delivered now, and I'm trying to have a new life and do things new. But y'all not gonna sit here and pick on leaders of tomorrow, international ministries, because we ain't closing our doors. That's what the devil wants us to close. And I want y'all to understand this, right? Everybody that's that, that's sitting here texting all of this nonsense. <laughs> You ain't no leader of tomorrow or today. And texting all of this <laughs> Hell, hate and texting all of this. It's my own people. I want y'all to understand that. It's my own people. It's our own people. That's what it is. It's our own people. Period point blank. So that's it, y'all. That's it. Um, y'all be black. Boy, stop playing the race card, you corny self. It's me reading my own captions here, yo. Oh my god. I'm going on with my day. And um, it is what it is, but I'll be back on uh, uh, to give you guys the... <laughs> I say one thing about the comments, they not on your side. <laughs> Hold on a second. To give you guys, I might even, you know, it is what it is. I'm eyes and all this other garbage and all this other nonsense. Listen, y'all, the bishop is here. <laughs> not me, said I'm telling Andrew Caldwell on you. Amazing. <laughs> and you're not... And you're not going to um, harm none of my family. You're not going to harm my family. So may God bless you guys. And, um, you know, I already knew that the enemy was going to attack. You know, I got my P two PhDs yesterday. People are mad. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> said your wife has got to be tired of riding for you. Because God says that he's no respecter of person. So whatever he can do for me, he'll do for you. God bless y'all. I just want y'all to see my face and let the liars continue to lie and let them continue to send all these trolls and continue to send, you know, people to try to interrupt what God is doing. When God say yes, when God say yes, nobody can say no. Amen. God mm -hmm. bless you. Y'all stay strong, stay encouraged, but I'm here. But I'll be back. All right. And I'm going to post some videos <laughs> and I got some some audio, too. So y'all see where it came from. All right. So, um. Y'all stay y'all stay focused, y'all stay blessed, and I'm out. God bless y'all. Roll us on your wrist of plane, John. So <clears throat> speaking of Andrew Caldwell, let me let me go and get him. Where he at? Where he at? Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to grow up. Grow up. I'm tired of telling y'all to grow up. Y'all need to stop it. I'm tired of it, y'all. You ain't finna work me out. <laughs> who does that? Who scams their church? He goes to stand up in front of their church and they're like, who, who does that? Who? <laughs> oh boy, they got you. They got you. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Here's the thing about it. Um, I, I took a stroll over to Larry because I had to take a stroll over to Larry Reed. I feel like Larry Reed is a little vindicated right now because he was going hard at him. And some of them allegations and the things he was saying, um, you know, things that have, you know, been done with in court. Right. I feel like he's vindicated, but I, I was on Larry Reed's page today and he was saying that um, he thinks he's going to be out in 24 hours. And I'm like, hmm, you know, that's that's interesting. Let me pull it up and show it to you. I would hope not. Not only would I hope not, <clears throat> I really don't think so. If this was like a regular state situation, and, and I hope that I hope that he's wrong. I hope that we're wrong. But let's talk about it. Like, what do y'all think down below in the comments? And look, if you haven't already taken a moment to hit thumbs up, make sure y'all do so now. It's free. You can send two dollars to the cash app, or you can donate for free by hitting thumbs up. Let's take a look at this. Larry Reed said earlier today, "I hope all the people who claim to have been wrong by Bishop Lymore Whitehead will somehow recover." read everything on the website to see why he was apprehended he'll be out in 24 hours i'm sure again if this was like a regular pickup by the state or local law enforcement maybe right but when the feds come and get you they have they don't like to have a, a success rate that's not going to stick when they pick you up, they've been watching you for a while. He was lying about having multiple phones. What was in that other phone that they that they even cared about it? 
They talk about embezzling money, stealing money. They've got multiple different instances and things. I would hope. Not to mention the thing I read earlier, right? And we were on the FBI's website. He has to stand in front of a judge. He has to stand in front of a judge and then post bond. If so, now, <clears throat> if he's found guilty, whatever needs to post bond, do you think he's going to be able to pay his bond with the stolen money that they already got him in there for? Like, how is he going to be able to realistically pay his bond with the extortion money? It, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I don't have an update as of now. I'm hoping that Larry's wrong. I, I think that Larry is just trying to keep his, his hopes low. And I get that because I do that sometimes. Things seem to be going your way too much. It's like, keep, keep your hopes low. It could change at any moment that way. It's not like your hopes are let down once it doesn't go the way that you hope you would think. I'm hoping that Larry is just keeping his, his hopes low so he's not disappointed. He out? Hold up now. He posted a 500. Now, how are they going to let him pay a bond for extortion with extortion money? Now, you're going to make me go look it up. You're going to make me go look it up right now. We're going to go ahead and get into it while we right here on, on, on the air. Because I know you lying. Is you, is you playing? Is you trolling? What's going on? Is you, is, is, what, 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 what's, what's going on? Let me, let's go take a look and see what's going on. Y'all stay with me because we're going to go ahead and look this up. <clears throat> we're going to go right here and look this up. Did, did, did anybody else hear he was out? Did anybody else hear that? Because I didn't. I looked right before we got started. And I didn't see that. He's definitely out. Jesus Christ. Y'all have got to be kidding me. Oh, I wonder if he on his page. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. <clears throat> I wonder if he's on his page. Baby. Oh, my God. 19. Okay, so he's not on his page, but they saying he's out. We're going to have to look this up and see. Make sure y'all ain't playing. We're going to have to make sure. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything about it. Let me see. Somebody in the Discord dropped something. We might as well just go ahead and take a look at it while we on air. New York Daily Times, <clears throat> what they saying? All right. I seen I seen three people say he was out. After months, he abused the truck. <laughs> Look at this picture here, baby. Famously robbed at gunpoint. Mm hmm. Sought money and other things from his victims in one instance, ninety thousand in another. Lied to the FBI. We already know that. We went over that. The truth is he owned a second phone. We know that. Arrested at 6 a.m. Appeared Monday afternoon in court where he was charged with two counts of wire fraud, each of which carries a maximum of 20. He pleaded not guilty. The bishop sporting a white hoodie and camouflage sweatpants wiped tears from, oh, now he was crying, wiped tears from his eyes <clears throat> as his attorney Don wearing those, uh, wearing rose tinted glasses was heard explaining the terms of his bail package on a hot microphone. His travel was restricted to New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, and he was ordered to surrender any passports and travel documents. The judge told him he was to have no contact with any of the alleged victims or witnesses and said he can't open any new lines of credit without permission of, <coughs> of pretrial services. He was released. Okay, there's the update. He was. Okay. Okay. I just want to point out to the court that my client had never owned a passport, never applied for a passport, and that Lamar Whitehill will absolutely make no new application for one. We're vigorously going to defend these accusations. We feel that he's being targeted, and he's being turned from a victim into a villain. Now, everyone was wrong about Bishop Lamar Whitehead setting up the robbery at the church. People were arrested. <clears throat> he had nothing to do with that. This all stems out of a civil lawsuit that's being handled 
in civil court and he will be vindicated. Now, earlier Adams, who had been friends with Whitehead for years, described the allegations against the pastor as troubling, but did not distance himself completely from him. He says, quote, I've spent decades enforcing the law and I expect everyone to follow it. Now, this is a mayor of New York City who he is. He's been besties with, photo ops with, and all this other stuff. Um, I have also dedicated my life to assisting individuals with troubled past. With these allegations are, while these allegations are troubling, I will withhold further comment until the process reaches its final conclusion. A close source to the mayor said that he and Whitehead have known each other since before he even became mayor of Brooklyn, um, Borough president in 2014. Now, the pastor's father was Arthur Miller, a Crown Heights businessman who died after a New York police officer put him in a chokehold in 1978. The source said that the mayor and Bishop Lamar Whitehead were first introduced to each other as part of the mayor's work with the 100 Blacks in Law Enforcement Who Care, a police reform advocacy group Adams co-founded while serving in the New York Police Department. Now, the mayor said, look, we go way back, me and Bishop Lamar Whitehead. <clears throat> now, Lamar Whitehead often refers to Adams as a mentor and a friend on social media, saying that um, the mayor taught him a lot and the two have been pictured together on many occasions over the years. This has been an eventful year for him, the gunpoint, he drives a Rolls Royce and has an affinity for Gucci suits and shiny jewelry. Wow, ah, 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 ah. last month, the bishop filed a $50 million lawsuit against a New York City hip hop radio station and one of the hosts calling him a drug dealer on the air for calling him a drug dealer. Okay, so one of the radio stations called him a drug dealer. And so Bishop Lamar Jackson, uh, um, Whitehead, <clears throat> filed a $50 million lawsuit against the radio station and the co-host. He said the accusation... Um, it hurt his reputation. A day before his arrest on federal charges, Bishop Lamar Whitehead posted a long rambling live video on his Instagram account. Toward the end of the monologue, the, monologue, the pastor, the bishop, asked his parishioners listen in to donate hundreds of dollars to his church and teased several announcements in the coming weeks. So it sounds like he knew this was coming. It sounds like he knew that this was coming. <clears throat> um, it's sewing time he says in the video you've got to sew I need to understand who's going to sew $300 right now sew 100 God is still going to bless you it's a measurement of your faith these are people who got less money than you now mind you you just scammed and stole all of yours but you asking these people you riding around no how about you go pawn some of your things a measurement of your faith he hyped an upcoming toy drive and seemed unaware he was going to be arrested the next day. He said, y'all stay tapped into me this week. There's going to be a lot of announcements. Wow. <clears throat> if, I mean, you know, he does ramble on a lot in general, but you're right, princess. I was hoping that Larry wasn't right for the sake of his vindication and for the sake of people feeling, you know, just financially secure being around him because he is a predator of some sorts to his own congregation, to the elderly, to people's pockets in general, anybody that's gullible enough. And, you know, seniors, senior adults, they are, um, they're vulnerable. They call them vulnerable adults. <clears throat> and I was hoping that it wasn't true, but God damn it. He was right. He's been released and he's been put on a travel ban. And he busy sitting up here asking people to donate $100 and $300 at a time as if he not rolling around in, in thousands of dollars worth of attire, apparel, clothes. This is beyond bananas. Like, I just, I, I can't, I just, I can't get over this. What do y'all think? Let's go to the book. Cause I know God got the, this ain't what God want. What? What is really going on here? Baby. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. I 
I just can't believe it. I mean, why would why would they even let this monster out? When does he do back in court again? That's what I want to know. And why y'all let him out? Why? Lord have mercy. This is a sick Negro. Ain't no reason he should be out. I mean, none. Literally, none. None. This is bizarre. This is bizarre. Wow. wow. Oh children. my God. I'm in shock. Are y'all in shock? Oh man. Oh, shy. I ain't trying to hear that shit. I, I can't believe it. I don't think the wife is brainwashed. I think the I think the wife knows exactly what's going on and she wants the lifestyle attached to him um him scamming. That's that's what I think. Um word on the curb is he played dice with the dope boys in Brooklyn. He need to go find them for help, child. Allegedly. Allegedly. He can't sell what's rented. Well, he can sure return it so that it's not as much of an expense. And he can go rent a hoopty or go buy him a hoopty for, you know, a couple thousand dollars. That's what he can do. But see, he doesn't want to sacrifice any of the luxury or any, any any of the things that make him comfortable in his life. He would rather make the people who don't have as much money as him, the broke people in his congregation, come out of pocket with a whole bunch of money and then talk about a toy drive. You don't need that money for a toy drive with this lavish lifestyle you live. You can you can do the toy drive and you can give back. So it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I, I can't even believe that. that. That just blew my mind. But thank you to the person in the chat who um who 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 dropped that and so that we were able to go over that update in real time. I, I do appreciate that. What are y'all thoughts down below? What are y'all thoughts? I was gonna drop the phone line, but uh, I don't know. Is there really much to talk about? I mean we've gotten all the facts and 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 that's that. He lives in Bergen County. If you went to court there they're gonna hang him um and milk him for everything. Well you know yeah, she's involved. I feel like she's involved from a distance. I mean, I'm, you're right, though. She's got to be involved in some type of way. She's got to be involved in some type of way because there's no way she's ignorant or she's blind to all of it. So whether she knows about it, whether she's actively participating or whether she's turning a blind eye so that legally, if they ever drag her in court too, she'd be like, listen, I didn't know about this stuff. I didn't participate. The whole time she might have done a little something, something while pretending to be oblivious. I thought I was just doing this for the church, for his investment property. Or this business never she was flat out scamming the way that he was it would, would be my assumption that would be my assumption um <clears throat> he did he absolutely sounded weird when when fat joe interviewed him um someone says is this a flashy pastor from flashy fake pastor from brooklyn yes this is him this is him so um that's a lot of money oh god i gotta sneeze <laughs> that's a lot of money um, that they let him out for, even if it's just 10%, because what was it, $500,000 uh, that he posted with. So what are y'all thoughts? Let's get in all our closing thoughts and remarks. Is he related to Wig? No, I don't think he's related to Wig, but they remind me of each other because they, they're they false prophets, you know? Um, so that's that. Uh, drop your final thoughts down below in the comments. What are your thoughts? I'm going to get to your um, your final thoughts as we wrap this up. I'm going to bring up your comments, address any and all questions. If there's anything else that we need to fact check while we're here, we'll do that. And then we're going to get out of here and see if we got time to do another live this evening. Okay. Drop your hottest, most spicy thoughts. It's, it's time for the holidays. Okay. It's time for the holidays. Are you ready for Christmas? Have you started Christmas shopping? Are you done Christmas shopping? Have you not started at all? Any and all thoughts, let me know down below. And of course, drop them pancakes. Okay. We'll be right back. The holidays are right around the corner and it's not too late to grab something for yourself or someone else. Step out smelling good and fully moisturized with Essence of Melanin. Look, Bath & Body Works body butters start at $18.50, but Essence of Melanin is a budget-friendly black-owned brand and theirs are just $8. Look, I personally have used and love their body butters. They're thick, 
they're creamy and there's a ton of different scents to choose from. They're made with natural essential oils and the ingredient list is very simple. The body butters are made with shea butter, olive oil, sweet almond oil, vitamin E, and skin friendly fragrances. This is a brand that I personally use and love and they've even got body oils and oil based colognes. It's black owned and it's budget friendly. So head on over to EssenceOfMelaninLLC.com That's EssenceOfMelaninLLC.com and grab your last minute holiday gifts today. And since we're talking about the holidays, I want to invite you somewhere. Follow me. Y'all know the holidays are right around the corner and it's time to be festive, turn up, and have a good time. So I'm inviting you personally to the first annual Ugly Christmas Sweater Party and it's virtual, of course, over here with your girl, the plainest Jane. It's on December the 21st, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss it, okay? Come on camera, let's celebrate. Show up in your ugliest purchased ugly Christmas sweater or go ahead and make your own hideous sweater because that's what I'm doing over here we're gonna have raffles cash giveaways regular games drinking games are optional okay black trivia and of course you know the ugliest and I do mean the oogliest the u-g-l-i-e-s-t sweater is gonna win the top cash prize giveaway Shout out to the sponsors of this year's Christmas sweater party. Y'all know JasmineMadeIt.com is your destination for Black Girl Magic Stationery for inside and outside of your home and even on the go. And of course, you can use my code Jane for 10% off of your purchase. Also, B Stokes Styling is up in the building and that's your one-stop shop for all things wigs and hair. Shop all of your wig accessories and your hair needs and more. From glueless bundles, lace tint spray silicone wig grips edge brushes custom wigs you name it they got it and again don't forget to use my code jane over there for 10 percent off as well you know it's time to christmas shop and or it's time to ask your hubby or your spouse for whatever the heck you want make them splurge on you a little bit all of these christmas links are down below in the description box just look for the christmas trees i put christmas links and it's all laid out for you and last but not least over at total life changes you can turn your wellness goals into reality with all the things you need for full body nutrition relaxation and relief and they even got some lemon cleansing slash detox teas infused with hemp to make you feel lighter and higher if you know what i mean so don't forget to show up to the Christmas party. Don't forget to check the Christmas links down below in the description box. And don't meet me there. Beat me there. This coming Wednesday, the 21st of December, all right, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And let's get our ugly Christmas sweater on. Roll us on your wrist plain, Jack. All right, and we are back. And our, our guy here, all of y'all are asking, where, where's Brother Leo? Where's Brother Leo? He's right here. He, he ain't got his kente cloth on today, but <clears throat> because he this is some impromptu stuff. I didn't plan on bringing him on, but but due to the fact that he's here at highly requested, you say hi to the people right there. You want to look into the camera? Look at look the people. They the camera. Yeah, we're getting you a new collar for Christmas. The people have said the people sent some money because they tired of saying it. And they want you to be blamed out. Okay, come on. Back up. Back up here. Okay. Okay, you can get one more. Say thank you. Say thank you to the people that sent you money for a new collar. They're trying to decide between gold and silver if we're gonna get you a gold or a silver, because we get you a chain. We get you a Cuban link, boy. Look, say say thank you. Look to the people. Just look. Just look at the look. At the, all right. It looks a little cruel me trying to get you to look. All right. All right. You've wasted enough of our time, son. Get down. Can you get down, please. Thank you. Real nasty. Leo, get down. Get down. It's not a thank you because it's not a question. 
y'all like him more than y'all like me. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I had to make it do what it do, you know? It is what it is. This is my sassy cat, okay? He talks back and all that. He, he, whole conversation, all right? This is my buddy. But th yeah, this was this this was such a crazy story. Thank you so much, Sugar Mafia, for joining the channel. Don't forget to check the members only community tab for your members only um, posts, videos, perks, and all that stuff. There's a lot of good stuff back there. I'm excited for the Christmas party. The ugly Christmas sweater party, look, you can wear anything, right? If, as long as it looks kind of Christmassy, you can wear an ugly Christmas hat, a regular Santa hat, something that's red and or green. You can be in front of your Christmas tree or decor, whatever it is. We're going to have cash giveaways, prizes. It's going to be really fun. Um, so I've already got a lot of the games and the trivia questions figured out. We're giving out cash for the ugliest sweater or piece of Christmas attire. And I think it's going to be dope. OK, it's going to be a good time. And I think everybody should show up. OK, we're going to cover a couple trending topics based on what's going on that day. And if you are a black owned business and you want to come up and talk about your business um, and you didn't necessarily buy a slot, there's still an opportunity for that. Um, so just make sure you're available Wednesday, 830 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you're available. Probably be around like a 10 or 15 dollar slot for you to come up and just say a couple things about your business. I'll pull up your website and you can advertise. OK. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's this um, this coming Wednesday. I did it the 21st because I feel like a lot of people might be shopping on Friday, Saturday. Christmas is on Sunday. Might even be shopping on Thursday. So I wanted to make it early enough to the point where people didn't feel like they were um, they were th where they had to be out and they had to be getting their last minute gifts or doing last minute things with their family. Okay. So this is the flyer. I'm going to post it on the community tab soon. Shout out to all the sponsors. Um, if you are a sponsor, please remember if you are available, you do have an additional opportunity to come up and talk about your business without any charge, despite the fact that we're going to be using this commercial. Um, okay, Leo, you know, the payment was for you to stay to the end of the video and we're just about there. Yeah, you got to stay. You need to stay. Yeah. So. What are y'all final thoughts? Christmas, what's going on? I do feel like doing another <laughs> Leo tight. He always tight. I do feel like doing another live today. Um, I had another live planned outside of this, Bishop. Um, I wanted to talk about all the family drama, Romeo, um, Master P, even though we had talked about that a couple days ago, it's still developing. Um, Bow Wow, the brat, Jermaine Dupree, the basketball player, what's his name? Amari something who like punched his daughter in the face. I wanted to cover all of those things and also let you all call in. So I'm either going to do that on this channel or the backup channel. Keep in mind the backup channel, a lot of people ask, it might be difficult for you to find in a description box because I do keep the description box very information packed. The backup channel is linked in the title of this video. You should see at TPJ Network. Yep. And it's clickable at within this title. So click TPJ network in this title here, subscribe to the backup channel. Um, there is some, um, Bishop Lamar Whitehead content over there that I didn't put over here. Um, specifically, namely the full fat Joe interview when he was being homophobic and stuff like that, that is over there. So check out the backup channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on your post notifications. If you haven't already, because we're either going to be over here or over there for a second live where we can kind of sit back and just kind of stroll and talk about, um, I guess, the Black family dynamic. I do enjoy talking about the Black family dynamic, the strengths, the weaknesses, where we're fractured, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, Romeo did say that they all broke. I saw that. I, th I think that there's a lot to discuss there. Okay. I think that there's a lot to discuss there. Um, if you haven't already taken a moment to subscribe to this channel, baby, what are you waiting for? Don't make me fight you. And don't make me kick you off my bus, okay? It's 500 of us here. Y'all know I'm never on this early, to be honest. I think I went live at like seven something. Give me my props. And I'm sick. I know y'all can hear it. But I was determined to give y'all this video. And um, I was already covering the story. So I'm like, let me do an update while I can. Um, I'm sick, but not too sick to the point where I couldn't cover it, especially because I did go to work today. Although I was sneezing and sniffling and snotting all day. Uh, but anyway, let me get off here and get a bite to eat. And then we'll come back. Um, I do still think I want to do the family drama stream. And then I'm going to see what if there are any other things that are trending. We can just stroll and kind of sit back and you can call in. Okay. Um, so I think that that's pretty much it. Okay. 
Brett Snacks are paying him directly. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to this, I know, and I'm pushing myself. I, the, the people in the Discord was like, don't push yourself too hard. You still sit. I'm going to push myself because I was supposed to go live yesterday and I didn't get a chance to. So now I just feel like, look, let me do it. I got my hair done. I, I, I feel sick, but I feel like I look good. All right. I feel like crap, but I feel like I don't look like crap. And I feel like they balance each other out. But I do still feel kind of crazy and hella congested, as I'm sure y'all can hear. But anyway, listen, y'all stay beautiful, black and blessed. OK, I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. If you haven't already um, finished your Christmas shop and listen, keep these black owned businesses in mind. Like I said, check for the Christmas trees down below. There are plenty of black. -owned, I only do black owned businesses over here that I promote. So check out the description box down below. If you haven't already, check out those businesses. You can use code Jane for jasminemadeit.com, okay? There is no minimum purchase requirement for jasminemadeit.com. Um, so, damn, I don't have my cup because I took it on the road with me earlier. Um, but check out those Black-owned businesses. It's not too late, whether it's for yourself or for somebody else, okay? I love y'all so much. Let me go ahead and get off of here. Um... And I'm going to see y'all later tonight. The sooner I get off, the sooner I'll be able to get back. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. Okay? And don't forget to thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But, but, make sure y'all drop some of them pancake emojis on y'all way out. Y'all stay blessed. I'll catch y'all next time. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen. Or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.